Hi folks, welcome back and thanks for joining. So today I need to make some silicone tubing for uh, my bioplastics and I went online and I looked and silicone tubing is expensive so I thought this is a good opportunity to show you folks how to make your own. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the clear silicone because I do want to see the uh, plastics squeeze out to the tube and what we're going to use is we're going to use a tray we're going to fill this with water and as the uh, curing agent to speed cure the uh, silicone we're going to use something different we're going to use hydrogen peroxide we're going to dump it in the water now to be able to make the tubing we're going to need a mandrel so what I've done is I uh, I've selected a piece of wood now these are uh, leftovers from a countertop project and I'm going to uh, drill a hole so I need a drill press or I need a, a drill and I'm going to drill it in here and then at 90 degrees I'm going to drill another hole into the side to where the holes intersect now after that what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, green screw and I'm going to screw into one of the holes a good depth and then I'm going to cut off the top of this with a uh, hacksaw and file it down and this will be good for one use. Now also to answer a couple of uh, mailbox questions about using clear silicone and being able to thin it with naphtha, well we're going to do that too. And can we use cornstarch as the curing agent to speed cure the silicone? We're going to explore that as well. All right now wait a minute you may not have a drill press or drill or screws or paddle bits now what are we going to do well because it's you we're going to throw those aside and we're going to use items that most probably you do have handy and right at your desk where you're watching just look around your desk find yourself a cheapo pen take it apart and recover this part this is just the tube and a candle and we need a tab from the candle wick so that's why I uh, pulled this wick out of this pillar candle to show you that now you can also use a container candle there's the tab for the wick we need the tab and to get this out while well, you freeze this as long as it's straight sides it'll pop right out now to drill the holes well a pair of scissors now the thickness of your tube will be determined by how deep you go down on your uh, scissors so as you progress now if you want to use something that you may have laying around as the pen, well, here's a toothpick. All right, now, because I need a larger diameter hole for my tubing than this toothpick, well, I'm going to use a craft stick. But you get the idea. All right. So let's get started. Well, let's spend a little time making the mandrel here. Now, um, you don't need the wick, but what you do need is the tab. So just uh, pull that off, throw the wick away. What we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to plunge the toothpick down into the tab. All right. Now there are some lateral forces so you'll want to have a good connection between your pin and the tab and then you just would pop that back into the candle. Now of course the toothpick is too short for this tall candle so you'll have to make that adjustment. Now to begin uh, making the holes well, I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to keep the mess inside here the best I can and uh, just work the scissors back and forth down that hole until I get to the diameter, the outside diameter of the tubing that I want which is roughly 3 eighths of an inch okay now if you'll notice these scissors are tapered so what you may want to do is uh, wallow that out just a little bit more down there and uh, so take your pen and just uh, pull out some of that now be careful if it's plastic uh, if you apply too much force you could probably snap this and I don't want you to get hurt so use caution when you're uh, doing your crafts okay so we're about that deep now fairly good hole so we're going to mark that that's the bottom so we want to go just a little bit above that and we want to start making the hole that's going to intersect our first one at roughly 90 degrees and so far I'm doing a pretty good job of keeping all the mess in this tray which is good because now I can just dump that and I'm looking to see I should have intersected see something down in there so let's just keep working this until we see okay. don't know if you can see the movement but our holes intersect I suppose I could have used something besides the color white so um, another option that I was going to show you is if you don't have the pen you know just anything to wall her down but let me see if I can demonstrate with another color not much better I just wall her it out Okay, I can see it clean. Perhaps you cannot. But what you want are two clean holes that intersect. Now, I said that I was going to use the craft stick for mine because I want a little larger inside diameter hole. So I may need to uh, work this a bit. And I'm going to work this through the existing hole of the candle back and forth until it reaches the top and I'll be back once I've done that alright so I've gotten most of the way and I'm ready to just clip this a bit and finish driving it all the way down so, this is a big stick give me just a sec there it is clean that up a bit if you like it's not really that necessary and uh, I'm just going to tap it on down so 
something that you have handy uh, maybe a little spice jar I did tap that uh, cut that a little long so it's going to require some more tapping than what I initially planned to show you All right, squeeze that back together. Like I said, it's not that critical. <sighs> Clean up your hole a bit. And you'll want to, uh, of course, obviously, center it the best that you can so that your uh, tube doesn't have a weak side to it. Now, I'm not going to be exerting a lot of pressure PSI through the through my tube so it's not that big a deal so. okay and there it is all right we are ready and uh, yes if you'll take note it is possible to put a square peg into a round hole <laughs> so my stick happened to be in square Okay, so now what I've done is I've uh, added uh, half a gallon to this, 1900, uh, well, 1 1.9 liters, and to that I'm going to add 8 ounces of the hydrogen peroxide, so that's uh, roughly 235 milliliters. Little finger stir. Okay, now we're ready to uh, make a tube. Yeah, I went online and looked at prices for the tube that, of the diameter that I'm making and uh, silicone tubing is a dollar seventy-five per foot. Okay, I'm piercing the inner foil shell and I didn't cut back too much of this because we do want this to go inside here and this tube of caulk costs three dollars and fifty cents and the bottle of uh, peroxide cost sixty five cents So that's uh, that's the first try at that. And we're going to let this sit. Now ideally, um, we, we may have an issue here. You see where it squeezed to a point here. And also it didn't start well here. First time I've done this. The Peroxide needs to get to the inside of the tube as well to cure the inside and I'm not sure that it's getting in there So we may have a bust, but we'll find out. We'll be back So while we're letting our um, Our tube cure we're going to move on to the other part of this which is to answer some mailbox questions about using clear silicone and I didn't nap to, to thin it. We're going to use my Ziploc bag trick as always. We're going to squeeze in a quantity here that I think will work in a pour.
let's put on some gloves. Uh, I'm using a uh, a solvent and uh, most solvents are capable of being absorbed through the skin and I don't want it to be part naphtha so I'm going to use the gloves. Let's start with a, uh, a third cup, what do you say? A little less. Squeeze out some of that air, seal it up. Let's put the lid back on here. Now I urge you to watch uh, previous videos in which I've uh, used naphtha. There we are, the two are mixed. And uh, It takes about 15 minutes of working time, 10 to 15 minutes of working time, to get everything mixed up. So I will be back. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes mixing it up in the bag. No mess. What I've laid here is a, uh, a Teflon sheet. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut a small corner. I thin this out pretty good. Okay. And as thin as it is, it's not going to take a lot to show you. Squeeze out. There we are. So. so yes, you can thin the clear silicone with the naphtha. Now another mailbox question was, of course, the cornstarch. Yes, you can use cornstarch to speed cure this, but uh, the cornstarch is going to—it's simply going to turn it white. So you will have to weigh that option for yourself. Now, a question that I get quite often as well is can you use mineral spirits instead of naphtha? Well, let's look on the back. Clean up. Mineral spirits. So, absolutely. You can use mineral spirits to then the silicone. Now the type of silicone that you want to use always is the product releases acetic acid during application and curing. This is the type of silicone that you want to use. 100% silicone acetic acid is released during application and curing. And that's all we need to do for that. All right. And when we come back, we're going to try and see if I have a tube. All right, so I've uh, clipped a piece of my tubing. It's very nice. Let's see if I can uh, use this little thing to demonstrate. Can you see the bubbles? So we have a tube. Perhaps it's going to be carrying liquid. That's the whole point of this. So let's put some liquid through there. Well, there we are.
Oh my. I seem to have this strange and sudden overwhelming urge to go to the bathroom, so I'll be back. All right then. So there we have it. Using uh, clear silicone and uh, hydrogen peroxide as the curing agent and constructing our own little uh, extruder out of some simple things that you have using nothing more for tools than a pair of scissors. We can make all the silicone tubing that we want. Now I had uh, told you that I looked it up a uh, dollar seventy-five per foot for a tubing of this size and uh, my cost for this little project was four dollars and fifteen cents and this will yield perhaps 50 feet of high quality silicone tubing so the savings are considerable with just a little bit of ingenuity and things that you have laying around so now and we've also answered a couple of mailbox questions that you folks have asked me a few times so um, I was inspired to include that in this video and that is yes we can use clear silicone and we can thin it with naphtha and you saw the pour and it is set up very nice now I left this bag just lay here and it is still liquid inside uh, it's been a couple of hours now so um, now if you wanted to speed up the cure on this of course you can use cornstarch and I've demonstrated in a previous video a couple of them on how to put everything into a Ziploc bag to keep from making a mess. Now I'm going to post the link to the video where I give ratios of cornstarch to silicone so that you can adjust your set times. Now this is important if you plan on thinning it for a pour because the more cornstarch that you add the less open time you're going to have so uh, you're going to need to adjust these too. And, uh, the ratios are in that video and I will post the link. Alright then, if you've enjoyed and you get value from this please subscribe because there's going to be uh, many more videos coming and uh, thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.